speaking of which, Raleigh Tejada, former Baylor cornerback, three-year starter, who is at the Pro Day, joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports via the technology of Zoom. Raleigh, thanks for your time. Paul Catalina to my left, Craig Smoke to my right, and David Smoke here. We appreciate your time. Uh, How, did you, did you, when you got home, <laughs> when you kind of got through all day yesterday, was there a sense of relief that at least you had a chance to make an argument for yourself? Yeah. Hello? Yep. There yeah. we go. What's up? <laughs> Hold on. That's okay. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? How you doing? We're doing great, Raleigh. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke. My question after you got through with yesterday, after it was all over, because it's a big interview session in a lot of ways, did you feel kind of a sense of relief that at least you had a chance to make an argument for yourself? Yeah, for sure. When um, I went uh, four four uh, zero, like my uh, dad tweeted, and I I just felt uh, super confident, felt fast, strong, and felt great in in the uh, uh, drills too. So I just felt felt like it was a great day. When you didn't, I mean, again, you didn't have the combine and everything. So this was your this was your showcase. How hard have you worked these last three months for what you did yesterday? Um, super, super uh, hard. I actually trained for about uh, two months and like two weeks, and and I just trained for the the forty. Trained for the testing that happened yesterday and i felt i felt super uh, confident um i felt fast in the 40 um y'all see the 440 and felt good in the shuttle and the cone drill um i actually went uh 415 in the shuttle and i feel like i made a great case for myself to be a draftable guy Raleigh, what was it like to uh, be out on that field for perhaps, you know, one of the final times? I mean, if you guys come back and, and work out, you know, in off seasons and whatnot, that, that would be normal. But in terms of being a Baylor football player out on that practice field and that indoor field, was it kind of surreal once you were done? They're like, hey, this is this is the last thing that we're doing. Yeah, for sure. Just kind of kind of um, thinking back to just getting recruited, going to camps at the Baylor indoor and just kind of uh, being there with JT, uh, Petrie, and Kalen, and just all my teammates, it felt super good to be in there. And it's just kind of crazy that time went went by so fast. And and just kind of being there just brought back tons of memories of off season workouts, um, memories of just being with the team. Raleigh, when you went to Florida, you mentioned you worked on specific things, and that's what everyone does when they get away, They whether they're going to be a part of the combine or whatever it is, or in this case, pro day. You went to go work on specific things. How tedious is that, and how like methodical do you have to be knowing that that you got to tweak this or you got to tweak that, and it's not easy? Yeah, um, it's pretty tough. Um just working on 40 starts, working on shuttle techniques, and then just um, just everything, working for all those drills that we did yesterday, um, just being super specific in the small details because the difference between a 4-3 and 4-4 is just a step. So the start mechanics are very important. And it's super tedious just going through that, and I feel super relieved that yesterday is over now. I feel like I put my best foot forward going out there and I feel like I just left it all out there. So I just hope that teams can see that I am capable of playing in that in the NFL and and I started uh thirty seven games at Baylor and played in fifty three career games and I feel like my just all my experience and and games that I played in and started and made plays will all work work well for me. 
Grawley, you also gained a little bit of weight, which was was a, bi- a big thing. You know, uh, some guys have to take it off. Some guys have to put it on. Uh, you put it on, and it, and it didn't affect you at all. It looks like it's it's improved uh, everything. How does how did that feel when you were able to kind of show that, yes, I can put on healthy weight, I can I can build some strength and, and, and do some things? Yeah, um, it felt good to show that and just to show people that I am strong and I had tons of tackles at Baylor – had two sack force fumbles and um I felt like um I felt good with the weight on. I weighed in at one ninety one and did bench press about fifteen times and I feel like that's a strength for me. Raleigh, uh, a lot of people talk about Jalen Petrie and the fact that he was the lone commit uh, when all hell broke loose basically. But there are two guys on last year's roster that were around even before that. One of them was you. And uh, one of them was also Jerem McVay. You guys are around for basically everything that's happened over the last six years. Uh, I can't even begin to, to memorize the number of position coaches that you in particular have had, defensive coordinators. I mean, the, the lot. How did you keep your, your mental semblance? How did you, you know, keep your focus and do all that when you, I mean, experienced as much change as anybody really can during a college career? Yeah, um, it's tough. I had uh, five different um, cornerback coaches and I had three different um, defensive coordinators. And it's always tough having change with that because the techniques change and just kind of what they expect changes from from uh, what they want. And then certain guys that they recruit um, that they probably would rather have play in front of you. But but yeah, like you said, me and uh, McVeigh and Petrie, we all been around for a while, and and it's tough um, having different coaches that come in. But I mean, we all pushed through it and all made the all made the best of the situations. Raleigh, um, I want to ask you this: uh, You started a ton of games. You mentioned that, but. The last couple of games were difficult because you didn't get a chance to play very much. How hard was that on you? Um, yeah, it was tough. Uh, just because I was used to playing pretty much every snap for the past couple of years. But, I mean, I just stayed on the sideline and stayed locked in. And whenever the coaches put me in the game, I made plays and just did the best that I could whenever the opportunity came to me. And... And, yeah, like I said, I just stayed locked in and just contributed all that I could to help the team win that Big 12 championship in Sugar Bowl. I'm going to – the play I'm going to remember the most this past year, and I had to look it up to make sure who it was against, but I remember it because it was home, and it was a strip sack, and it was against Texas Tech, and it was a critical part of that game. Mm -hmm. And that kind of just to me summarized you, that you played with your hair on fire, you played fearless – and you made big plays, and sometimes that got overlooked. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, I, I've been um, making plays for Baylor since 2018, going all the way back to there, made some critical plays uh, each season. And like you said, against Tech, I had that big stri- strip sack fumble. And, yeah, I feel like some of my stuff does definitely go overlooked. Uh, going back to the COVID year, I had a great year and um, didn't get voted for all Big 12, which I feel like I should have that year too. But, I mean, I feel like going back, I mean, you can see I I made tons of big plays, and a lot of stuff's been overlooked, uh, in my opinion. Um, I feel like I've definitely been the best cornerback on the team since going back to 2018 and uh, one of the best in the conference and country. And and I feel like I've showed that every time I've gotten to go out there and make play, make plays and and definitely got to show that at pro day. And I feel like a NFL team that gets me will definitely get a hard worker, a guy that's very consistent and a guy that just uh, plays hard and just makes big plays. Raleigh, what's it like to have a hype man like your dad? Oh, yeah, it's cool, man. My dad, he's uh, definitely my uh, biggest fan. And he, um, he's he been uh, coaching me. He coached me back when I was a kid. And 
and he still plays real close attention to everything. Raleigh, uh, what was kind of the the discussions that you had afterwards? Uh, was there anything in particular that you heard from from scouts uh, that was was notable or that you took away uh, from from yesterday? Um, I feel like scouts really liked my speed. They liked my um, strength too, and then they liked my experience since I played in a lot of games at Baylor. So, so I'm just gonna keep working hard and just see where all this takes me. How big is it to have uh, options as well? well? I mean, I know NFL is the goal. NFL is going to be the goal, and hopefully you get that opportunity. But there was also the CFL that was out there. The XFL was out there. Is it at least, I'm, I'm just saying, good to have options, perhaps, if what you want initially doesn't work out the way you plan? Yeah, for sure. I mean, those leagues are great leagues. And my older brother actually plays in Canada. Oh, yeah, that's right. He, yeah, yeah. My uh, older brother's been playing there for the past couple of years, mm-hmm. and the CFL is a very great league. And then the XFL and USFL, it's all great opportunities to continue to play football. I got uh, your father and I have communicated over the years, and I remember the spring game. Sat there and spoke with him for a long, long time. Brian Etheridge was standing next to us, among others. He said this. Uh, this is back on July the ninth. Um. He said, I believe that Baylor may end up with their best defense he's ever seen, with, with, with you on it, with the best defense that Raleigh has ever been a part of at Baylor. And that says a lot because you know specifically how good that 19 defense with Matt Rule and that defensive front with James Lynch and company, Bravion Roy. But I think Baylor has the talent. This is just to win the Big 12 and be – one of the best teams in the country, and that's why I decided to come back was to help the team win. So now what? What do you do now? What's what's next? I, you've had the pro day. There's going to be a while between now and whatever. Uh, what do you do now? Um, right now, just continue to train, and I'm going to the Dallas uh, Cowboys pro day tomorrow. Good. And um, it's going to be a lot of people there, too, from Baylor, and that's going to be a great opportunity to – go do drills and run in front of those coaches and just show them what I'm capable of. Is that their Dallas Day event that they do with the, all the local guys? Yeah, yeah, it okay. is. It's the Dallas Day. Cool. Good deal. Good deal. I, I we, Craig brought up you know, your father, and I've said a couple of things, but this is a family deal. And there was a story in Texas football of the Tejada family. How can you try to explain the bond the Tejada family has? Yeah, um, it's a tight bond. It's a lot of us. My younger brother plays at UNT. He plays cornerback. Mm-hmm. He actually started some games last season. And then my older brother, he plays in Canada. But me and my whole family, we're all very tight together and close-knit. And, and yeah, man, we just all root for each other and just continue to push each other to be the best that we can. I don't think people realize that people have probably at times bet against you and you have proven along the way, okay, just go ahead. And yesterday was a big day for you. I know there's no question about it. Good luck, Raleigh. We will be following you. And uh, there's no question it was a day when you put your mark out there. And now we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Raleigh. Thank you. Raleigh Tejada, you know, Craig wrote an article today about Pro Day, and w- it was something that you you heard about the loan commit, and he mentioned Jalen Petrie, who's gotten a lot of attention. But I think Raleigh Tejada, and you mentioned Jerem McVay. Think about that. Tejada's the strip sack against Oak, uh, Texas Tech. That was huge. That put him in a position to play in a Big 12 championship game, and then McVay made the play that will all time go down, mm-hmm. uh, the McPlay. Uh, but uh, Jalen Petrie stayed committed when Art Browles got fired. Uh, Raleigh Tejada played for Art Browles for a year and yep. then stayed throughout all the rest of that. So he actually lost his head coach, not the coach that was recruiting him. And I'm not taking away from Jalen Petrie's lone commit, legendary status. That's always going to be a Baylor thing, and, and it deserves to be because he's an incredible player. But, yeah, he, he wasn't the only guy who showed loyalty. Raleigh Tejada showed some loyalty. And, you know, I see people, well, I mean, what else is he going to do? You know, like, uh, the, you know, just a super negative. And it's like uh, he could have done a number of things. Dude played in a lot of games. And, and that was early on in his career where there wasn't, like, some judgment on who he was as a player. I mean, he had, you know, just a lot of potential. And uh, thankfully for Baylor, he stuck around when they, they really needed uh, some, some guys to stick around. And, uh, you know, then look at the plays that, like in the Texas Tech game that you mentioned, look at the play Jeremy McVay made. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, and we know what Petrie did. So, you know, those guys all had multiple opportunities and multiple coach changes to uh, to go elsewhere. Like so many of these kids who they don't even lose coaches. They're just like, oh, NIL money. Boom, I'm gone. I'm out the door. So much for loyalty. Right. And, you know, uh, maybe NIL would have changed maybe some of that back then for, for some of those guys. I don't know. But just in general, there's not a lot of loyalty that goes around. And that's about as loyal of a well, dude as it gets, especially when you can transfer it. Any, I mean, yeah. the last three years alone he could have transferred and played right away so there's i mean he could have you know just waited out the ncaa so they didn't have to file away but i'll, I'll even say it the last four years because you know before they did the one-time transfer rule all you had to do to get a waiver yep. was tell the ncaa well i'm gonna take you to court and they're like ah we we're spread too thin so yeah you can play whatever it is you can play that's why they made the rule because they couldn't keep going to court and losing or, or going to court at all because they, you only have so many lawyers you can hire and if everybody who transfers are going to file a suit against you so they win so for the last four years he could have gone anywhere he wanted and played right away so it does say a lot about raleigh 37 starts over his career first year of course was redshirted uh played a, and a handful of games his uh redshirt freshman year Started six games his sophomore year, started, started all 14 games. The team that played for the Big 12 title and then also then lost in the Sugar Bowl. Started all 14 games at corner along with nine games in 2020, which, of course, they only played nine. the whole season, yeah. Yep, and then started eight of 14 games last year at cornerback as well. And the other big thing about Raleigh Tejada, now this, this does, again, they're going to look at, he's just a damn good kid. Great family. Good to have him on. Thank you for the time, Raleigh Tejada. Good luck tomorrow and all the others that will be at that Cowboys Pro Day or Cowboys Local uh, College Day as well. Back with more Sikkim 3.